You guys are quiet this morning. Weird. What's up, Steph? Good morning. What's up, buddy? There you are. Headphones doing the same thing again. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> see, now you know I'm not ignoring you. Yeah. <laughs> James, what's morning. up, buddy? Hey, sorry, I got the microphone working on my phone. Ah, uh, it's all good. I didn't know which uh, James was in here. We got two Jameses, so uh, yeah. I'm looking at a buy right now. Um, if we get a pass above the previous 30 minute candle, um, with a stop loss down here, I'm only going to risk 1%, but I like this setup right here. Uh, we have about, let's see, we have 12 pips to play with. So yeah, I like that wick down the bottom. Yeah, how are we directed off that level? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're exiting this area right here. Looks like we're coming back up. Let's see, we're flipping bullish. 6.30. Am I going 1% over here? Okay, I like that setup. So what I'm looking at is, here, let me just, I should do this first. So as you guys see, the four hours is ranging right here. And we got this bullish candle right here, strong bullish candle. Didn't close above this area, but this candle came down, created its, its bottom wick. And now it's passing the high of these candles up here, uh, creating a higher low and a higher high. Uh, of the previous four hour candle, which I like. Um, this candle came down, rejected this area again, like it did over here. And now it's starting to pass up and come into this area. I'm gonna secure at 10 pips, move my stop loss to break even, be more conservative on this one, but I like this uh, setup. I don't know why my computer's so slow today. What's up? What's up, Mana? What's good, what's good? You doing, brother? Doing good. Let's good, get this man. week, man. What's up? So let's get this week. Oh, fuck yeah. It's about to be a big week. Yes, sir. I'm feeling it. Yeah, I waited for this to happen. I waited for this candle to come all the way down here and reject. Uh, now I entered as price past the high of this candle over here. So, um, trying to see. Yeah, we had a crappy London again today. Did it? Yeah, look like it. Just like a four-hour range, pretty much. Yeah. David, James, Gio, what's up, my man? What's up, man? Good morning. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Good, man. 
I entered an impulse entry on GJ as price rejected this previous support down here. Uh, looking at the four hour and the one hour, how the one hour is kind of, or the four hours kind of exiting this area. This consolidation over here created its uh, lower low and lower high, or uh, higher low and higher high, excuse me. Uh, now it's starting to come up into this area. So I'm anticipating price to push bullish. Uh, the one hour came down, rejected this area, starting to continue bullish. This candle right here closed above this resistance over here. If you want to put that right there on the higher time frame. So I'm just anticipating price to come up. I'm going to secure it around 8 to 10 pips. Uh, move my stop loss to break even. Be a little bit more conservative on a Monday. And just be smart. Stick to the plan. That's it. I'm feeling a big week for all of us. Yeah, I'm uh, uploading our Sunday uh, forecast from yesterday. I don't know why it didn't upload yesterday, but I'm trying to do so right now for you. <clears throat> if you guys want to go back and rewatch. Anybody have anything that they're looking at? They want to send a chart and uh, take a look at some uh, setups? I'm looking at the same thing. I'm just worried about that zone to the left. Yeah, GGS. that's that's why I'm probably going to secure uh, around here. That's what that, you know. That's part of my trading plan anyway. I always secure either a ten pips, the next zone. The next zone is normally uh, much higher than ten pips, but I like the higher time frame of GJ right now and the way it's moving. Uh, I see it uh, tapping these wicks up here one more time, at least. Yeah. Yeah, that's for well, sure. We shall see. Be patient, manage risk. Just be smart. Did I take a picture? No, I didn't. Mine, I see you uh, got a bunch of uh, back testing in, huh? Yes, sir. I love it. It's going pretty well. I love it, man. Pick it up. Yes, sir. You feel, how do you feel? Do you feel a little bit more confident in seeing some more setups? Uh, I'm still at the phase where I anticipate myself to have a losing streak because that's always what happens. Like, I'm, I'm trying to make that mental shift. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. You're You're trying to keep yourself from having a losing streak? No, 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 from having, uh, I don't know, from being scared to start losing a few trades because I've, ne I've never done that good on a simulation. And now I'm just, I just feel like I'm scared to take trades because I'm going to, I feel like a losing streak is coming because, you know, I I've been break even for like a year and it's just yeah. up and down, right? So you win a couple and then you expect to, uh, to lose a couple. So now I'm trying mm -hmm. to get over that mental barrier. Got it. Yeah, it's... um. See, you, you can't have that negative attitude, right? Yeah. Where it's like you're expecting the worst, expecting the worst. You're, you're never going to get anywhere. You got to embrace losing because you're going to have a loss, but you know, you're not going to have as many losses as you do wins because you know you're set up and you know you're taking smart trades and uh, the trades that you're used to taking, whether it's the setup that you've seen multiple times or a new setup that you've been back testing that you've seen a couple of times that you're now risking a small amount on. But um, nevertheless, you know, you know that there is a possibility for you to lose. You're just taking high probability setups. Yes, sir. Right. So just keep keep a positive mindset, knowing that you're doing really well. You're up like 8% in a month. Yeah. Right. So uh, just keep that up and, and keep doing what you're doing. Focus on what you're doing and um, see where you go. Don't, don't keep focusing on losses. Because losses are going to happen. It's a part of growth. Like, you you need to embrace the fact that you need losses. 
Because how else are you going to learn from anything? Yeah. Wouldn't you much rather take the losses when your account is much smaller than when your account is a lot bigger and you're learning then? You're losing, you know, your business is losing a lot more money. Yeah. You know, you know, take those losses now. Take those lessons now. Embrace them. Be like, okay, that's that's not going to affect me emotionally. I'm fine. You know, I expect that. Yeah, try me. Yeah, try me, baby. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm going to go. So this candle is coming a little bit back into that range. I'm seeing what it's the 15 minute is going to do and how the 15 minute is going to close. <clears throat> Completely cool. Joe, you have a good weekend? Yes, sir. Good stuff. How are those deals going in the uh, Philippines? Uh, so far, um, actually, we're um, having a hard time dealing with the bank. <laughs> I'm trying to negotiate the rate with them. Um, but so far, everything's working fine. Um, I have all the requirements that I needed. So, Okay, good. Good. So you're you're having issues with the bank, you said? I'm trying to deal, like, to make the my, my rate lower. Okay. Because uh, I already had a loan with them before, and uh, I never missed a payment, and I, I actually paid it earlier. And so uh, I'm trying to, you know, may, uh, get a better deal. Yeah. You're trying to just, like, renegotiate it? Yep. Yeah. How's your buddy doing out there? It's fine. Um, I think uh, pretty soon they're getting, uh, hopefully, uh, they can start opening up. Um, and so I can come over and you know, start signing papers and stuff. Yeah. Go visit. Take right, a look now, at the project. Yeah, right now they have a, a seven day mandatory quarantine. So, yeah, that would be a waste of time if I just, you know, go yeah. right now. And... How long do you know, like, forget COVID, how long do you normally go over there for? Uh, before at least uh, every year. Well, the um, last time I was there was 2019. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's crazy how that feels so much longer ago. Yep. You know. Well, when I was there, I felt like, you know, because um, I, uh, I went to Japan as well. And I went to Hong Kong. Wow. Um, I was in Japan for like six days and then Hong Kong for like uh, four or five days. Wow. And uh, yeah, I felt like I had COVID during that time. Oh, really? You felt symptoms? It, 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 yeah. I was sick the whole, like, well, the whole time we were in Japan. Like, I, I remember we were eating uh, ramen and it's crazy. Like, I can't taste anything. Oh, wow. And you probably didn't even know what it was at that point. No, that was that was, that was uh, back in November of 2019. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that's crazy.
What's it like over in uh, Japan? What's the what? I'm sorry. What's it like over in Japan? Well, when we were there, we actually went to uh, small towns, and um, it's pretty much um, how would I say that? Because、um, if you go to Tokyo or Osaka, they're more actually westernized than before,、um, you know. But we, but the place that we went, it was actually. It was still kind of hard to travel around that area because there were no English translation anywhere. Okay. And so,、um, but if you go to like big city like Tokyo, Osaka,、uh, you should be fine. You know,、um, uh, uh, there's it, it'll be easier to you know you go to a hotel, you can easily you know find English translation. Okay.、Uh, if you go to like small towns, too difficult. Like I was, you know, I was in the bus and、uh, I was in the subway, and there were no any translation, so you don't know where to get off. So you have, you always have to have your、uh, your phone with you, Google Map, and translate and stuff. Yeah, that's that's probably so annoying trying to get directions, trying to do、uh, trying to do anything. Hmm. It's pretty nice. Like,、um, it's I would say.、Uh, It, it is the safest city or, or place that you could be in. It's just like late at night. You walk around. There's, there's just, you just feel safe. That's awesome. Yeah, you can hear me、uh, clearly, can you? Yeah, I closed the full thing over here. It looks like going back to the range. Yeah, so you want to keep in mind that、uh, impulse entries are riskier entries, right? And I like this setup because you see how the four hour is starting to, you know, create its bottom wick, and now it's starting to come up past the high of these candles over here.、Uh, the one hour、uh, was starting to push up past these th this resistance over here. If you want to draw that right there on the one hour. So we'll see if this gets rejected over here and starts putting a bullish candle to continue up. But、um, you just want to keep in mind with GJ right now on the higher time frames, we're at three-year highs, right? So part of me feels like we're we're just gonna reject this for a little bit、uh, and and get that correction on GJ. Um, I, I did see an opportunity for buys, but you know I, I only risk one percent. I managed my risk very well, but it looked like we were exiting this area, this、uh, consolidation over here on the four hour to continue bullish right back up to one fifty five sixty. So that's what I was looking at. That's what was behind that trade. But again, like I said, you manage risk. You stay smart. I think it looks nice. I think it's just a premature entry. I think it could be、uh, the next candle could be. A, I mean, this candle could be a retest on the one hour. Yeah. No. Of of this zone over here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it closes above this range, you know that 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 that'll be good. But if not, that's a fake out, and we're coming right back down into here. So. Which it looks like, but the thirty minute, you know, we got those rejections over here. This looked perfect as price was passing the high of this candle right here and starting to push up.、Um, I liked it, especially in the second half of the thirty minute candle. It was passing the high of this candle, so that's a higher probability impulse entry right there.、Um, but. So when you entered this trade,、uh, what, what was your、uh, stop loss then?、Um, so the stop loss was below the thirty minute candle, so that I had room to hold on one second. So the thirty minute candle didn't have this bottom wick over here; it was just pushing up、um, above this candle over here. So I put my stop loss below the thirty minute candle.、Um, oh, the current thirty minute. The current thirty minute, the breakout、okay. candle. So、like this one, as this one was passing the high of this candle right over here, my stop loss was right down here. Price rejected up here; it started coming up,、um, and then started 
you know, going bearish, I closed 50. And then, you know, not much longer after that, I ended up just closing the full thing because I was uncomfortable. And, and mm. that's, it's a main skill set that you want to build is that risk management because it's so valuable. It's, it's one of the hardest things that you can manage, uh, but it's, um, it, it's one of the best things that you could grab a hold of uh, and bring into your trading, especially trading the, the, the way that we do, you know? Right, right. You want to reduce those losses as much as possible. If you feel uncomfortable, then just close the full thing, right? You can always re-enter if you're convicted on that, um, that setup. What's up, Nathan? Yo, how are we? Great, how are you? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. I uh, took one trade this morning, took a loss on GJ. Okay. So I'm going to send the chart over now. Yeah, please do. I, guys, if you could just keep sending your charts, um, it, it's super important for your growth so that we could dive deep into it uh, see what you're looking at, see what um, possible um, other entries that you could have done, how you could have managed risk maybe a little bit better. And that's that's growth for you. You know, you're learning something new every single time, not only taking the loss or the win, but also just learning from somebody else's uh, point of view. Yeah, it was pretty poor trade. I'm not going to, well, I managed my risk absolutely fine, but I pulled 50% as it started to come down and then I re-entered 50% as the doji candle closed because I anticipated that it was going to start pushing back upside. Right over here? Yeah, it broke above and then when it closed above, just barely, and then the next candle, it started to come back down and retest and that's when I, or sorry, I had entered already <laughs> at that stage. Um, so when it started to come back down and retest, um, it started to come down a tiny bit further than I would have liked. So I closed 50%. Then it came back up and it closed like a doji. So I was like, okay, then surely then it's going to start pushing back upside. And it, it didn't. Um, so I, I had already re-entered 50% at that st stage. And then I got stop, my stop loss was hit. So it's pretty uh, poor. Now, do you have the screenshots of the higher time frames? I didn't, but I, yeah, I've got to start um, screenshotting higher time frames. Okay. Because That'll be... Like That'll be helpful helpful for you. Wow, look at you doing mm -hmm. that. That's great. Hold on one second. Okay, so I just want to take a look at your trade. I think it was right around here, right? Yeah, it was on the 15 minute and it was the doji that kind of popped, but um it was, it was, it was as we came out of this structure. So it was this, yeah, this candle here. Um, I took it off the fifteen minutes, so maybe that it actually wasn't there. If I'd have looked at it, looked at it on the, um, on the fifteen minute instead. So yeah, there's the Doji candle that we're looking at. Okay, so. On, on the 15 minute, the 30 minute, the, the four hour, even two, mm -hmm. like, look at this, look at the range that we're in, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. you just got to ask yourself, do you want to take this? Like, I just took GJ, but what I saw was this candle starting to exit um, this yeah. area over here. And I ended up just getting screwed a little bit. That's fine. You know, I'm, I'm not going to re enter on this because that range was small. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in this, you, you don't want to be in that, especially on the one hour. You know, we're mm -hmm. printed sideways. We want to trade in the trending market. So yeah. you want to wait for the smarter entry where you wait for price to clear this area and maybe come right back down here. Mm -hmm. uh, even still, that, you know, that's, uh, let's see how many pips that is. Yeah, it's 30, 32 pips. You could grab something in there. Mm -hmm. um, but also you want to wait for price to exit this area over here. Yeah, price to come back up into this area or continue up here. So um, I, I see what you were doing though. You know, you see support forms. Yeah, um, see, I wanted to get the early entry because last week I kept like it was waiting on that. Not that I was waiting on the like cleaner entry, but I was like, I think I, I was waiting too long, and then I was missing the opportunity when it was right there because I was just I was a bit too apprehensive, but. This morning, I don't think I was impatient. I just, it formed in front of me and then I saw it, but I didn't kind of look at the higher time frame, which I probably should have. Like, um, 
to see that it was obviously just moving and it was printing sideways. But um, no, I just wanted to, again, I've managed my risk, so I, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's good that you manage risk. Now, on your trading plan, right down there, check all time frames just yeah. before entering your trade. Remember? Well, generally, I, I would check the higher time frames. I don't think I looked at it on this one. It's probably just come back to bite me in the ass. So I'm trying to see right here what your range was. 25 pips. Okay. So you have 25 pips in here. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking the impulse entry, which I see what you're doing, but yeah. wait, wait for the retest on this. Yeah. Um, because, you know, any kind of impulse entry in some in a range like this, you know, mm -hmm. you kind of want to stay away from. Uh, wait yeah. for this little retest right here and grab this candle. This candle was 20 pips. Yeah. You know? Um, the only reason I took it impulse entry over here is because price was passing the high of this candle over here. And um, I've seen this set up too many times not to take it. Mm -hmm. So I took this as this candle didn't even have that bottom wick right here. Yeah. And in the second half of the 30 minute candle, you know, it's, it's about to be six o'clock. So I took this around uh, 630 something. Um, so the, the second half of the one hour candle is what I'm saying was passing the high of this candle right here. Mm -hmm. We had that rejection and yeah. we're starting to push up. I'm, I'm waiting for a retest of this area up here and then continuing up into 150, 550. Yeah. Uh, See, that was like that trade right there is like, um, where you were as in, that was what the one I was looking for. But yeah. if I had a waited, it formed that kind of support, a minor support there at 149, 950. And then it started to push upwards. But it was just like, it was again caught in these like, it wasn't a clean move. It was like caught in ranges and it was like ranges of like, if it got above a specific zone or at a specific level, it was like, you know, 15 or 20 pips or it was like even closer down to 10 pips, like between there and, and your target area. Like, so I was just kind of <laughs> waiting and I just saw the other one coming up. Um, yeah, I, I have just journaled another trade. I took it on a demo account that I have for, for gold, but it's like just one that I'm trading live with. Um, it's just a live demo Oof. account. But I'm just what am I doing? See. This was it. It's price past the low of this candle right here was your entry. Yeah, I have a sell. But it... Yeah, this this is a good entry right there. Now this thirty minute candle closed with no top, with no bottom wick. So maybe we get the retest and we could take this down. So let's stay patient for that and see if we get that. If we don't, we don't. That's fine. Uh, but we should get a retest of this zone that we've been in. So that was this was the zone that was created before NFP. Remember? Yeah. We're waiting for NFP, and then this was NFP right over here. Now what happened was with gold. I don't know why my chart is not the way it was, but um, gold. We've been in this downtrend over here. <coughs> Shit. Little fake out over here. But as you guys see, you know, this is what we were calling out last week. Where price is going to consolidate a little bit, retest this bearish trend, and then drop. Over here, retest this bearish trend. Had a fake out to retest the support of this this uh, consolidation over here, retested it and dro dropped. Right. So, are we going to get a continued drop? What it was doing right here was forming uh, its top wick last night on the weekly candle. So, as I said yesterday during the market breakdown, the two previous um, bearish. Weekly candles on gold had a top wick like this. So what did they do over here with the new weekly candle? Came up, created its top wick with that fake out on the lower time frames and just dropped. That's what it's doing right now. It's coming right back down into 1680, which is what we were talking about yesterday. Don't know if we're going to get that retest, but we'll see.
like, yeah, this this was that move. So this is uh, what you were journaling right over here. Uncle. This is a, I have a, I just have a demo account for gold because I want to start trading gold next Monday. Um, okay. I've been back testing me and Giovanni are back testing. We're going to do a three hour live session or just a three hour session tonight. Uh, back testing gold. Shit, um, so yeah, we're going to put, I really want to put in the work because I really want to get better at trading gold or be oh, more yeah. comfortable in trading it. But this was the trade that I took. Again, it's only on the 15 minute. I probably want to get those. Um, I want to get those higher time frames to show you. But um, took the trade on the demo account as it closed below a previous zone of like it seemed like it was just forming this minor, um, this minor support. But I was also looking at a head and shoulders here. Um, so it, shoulders on the left side and then the right side. It come back down. It tested the support, started to push back upside, and then as it broke through, um. As it broke through there this morning, um, I think it was like 8.30 or 8.45, somewhere along that time, uh, nearly 9 o'clock actually, yeah. And then I took the sell as it kind of passed up below. Now, I'm looking at a uh, possible impulse entry. Is this candle created resistance right here? Mm -hmm. Past the low of this uh, bullish candle right there. No top wick, no top wick over here. And it just drops, continuing yeah. the downtrend that it was in. Nice. Right. That's an extra 30 pips as well. It was just I wasn't 100% confident in executing it because the way that gold had wicked last week, you know, we've seen it obviously the way it just wicks up and down. Oh, yeah. um, you know, I was I just kind of wanted to close. Yeah. No, I totally get it. Totally get it. But just take note of that stuff. Like go yeah. back now and journal that entry that you would have gotten. I have it on my, I have it on my journal. Also, the previous the previous trade that we looked over, you learned a couple of things, so you gotta yeah. relook at every single time frame before entering that yeah. trade. Just just glance through it. Just you know, go go like this. Okay, I'm good. Right? Yeah. Uh, just because you're doing that top down analysis, maybe two or three hours before you actually take a trade. Yeah. Now, gold. I like the fact that it closed. With no bottom wick over here. So I'm looking for support to be formed, a uh, retest of this area, maybe a retest of this area up here, and we get it. If it drops, we missed it. That's fine. This was our entry, and we'll catch this next time. But um, that's what I'm looking for right now, especially with no, no bottom wick right over here. It did, though, um, create its top wick, which is um, pretty interesting. So if price closes with no bottom wick like this and then just continues to drop, that, that, that's a very low probability of that happening. But what you could get is that retest, create the top wick, and then it drops. So just keep that in mind with that, you know, when candles close with no wicks. That means there's no momentum for price to continue in that direction. Justin, what's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Good. How about yourself? Good, thanks. Awesome. So, yeah, we're stuck in this range on GJ. It's just a mess. A lot of wicks. Glad I managed risk. EJ, just take a look at EJ right now. Could be getting that drop. You got this key area that G, uh, EJ's in right now. Starting to come down. You want to close below this area, below the support. Get a clean move to the left. Price right, going to close below this area. And how many pips do we have? About twenty nine, thirty pips. 
see EJ. We could be getting that uh, correction now. 129,500. <clears throat> could be getting this correction down on the uh, daily, the five minute. Um, as far as price coming down, retesting this area somewhere down here, maybe this support right over here. Retest this, form support, and continue bullish. It's about time for GJ and EJ to get that correction on the, the higher time frames. Form of resistance right over here. Starting to push bearish. You want to wait for the close below in order to take this move down. So we could be getting that retest on gold. This is what I'm looking for. So as we see, we are ranging. This is NFP, the move on NFP yesterday. And we got that fake out with gold creating its top wick on the weekly, right? Now it just dropped. Now, when you see this fake out, keep in mind, there's a high probability of price breaking out the other side um, pretty, pretty quickly. And that's what it did. It just dropped. Now we're getting that retest of the previous zone. And we, th this might be our entry today. Who was able to uh, put in some work this weekend? I did some back. Not enough. Not enough. Yeah, Nathan, that's all good. I know, Mana, I know you were. That's awesome. But um, Nathan, what I was saying last night, you know, yeah. when, when you have some of those distractions with family or whatever the case is, doesn't matter what it is, um, just know that, all right, it happened. You know, I, I, I wasn't able to get the work that I wanted in, but I learned from mm -hmm. it. Now I can go forward and, and maybe make yeah. more of my time or, you know, deduct my time from some kind of distraction that I normally have. And mm. uh, put it into forex. And it's, no, absolutely. There's, there's nothing you can control. I've gone through no. that so many times, so many times, where like, you know, I wasn't present in the ab absolute moment of where yeah, I was exactly. at the time, and I'm just thinking like, I really should be getting work done right now and stuff like yeah. that. That's that's a shitty place to be in. That's just natural as an entrepreneur. You're constantly thinking about business, constantly thinking absolutely. about trading. Um, it, that's just how we're wired. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, but you, you want to make sure that you're present in every moment. But if you miss time when it comes to getting work done, don't be so hard on yourself. No, just absolutely. Know that, yeah, just know that moving forward, like, all right, now I, I have today. I have 24 yeah. hours today to, to put in some 100%. Work. No, again, it's just really, it's really easy to kind of sabotage your week oh, yeah. over a, a silly missed weekend. Like, yeah. and that's the one thing that I didn't want to do. So I suppose getting up this morning again and getting out on the bike was a huge thing just to kind of, you know, again, didn't want to do it this morning, but went out and did it and felt 10 times better. And it started me off on a good foot this week anyway. So, right. Dude, when you take action like that, you go hit a, hit a workout, hit a bike ride, hit, um, a back testing session. Every time you make, uh, constantly create action, yeah, you get you get that motivation right back. It's, like it's crazy, know. like because like even this weekend, like yesterday. So then I went like Sunday yesterday was like the first time that I went on like a really long bike ride on the new bike, like, and it was just like I did like so much more than I thought I could, and like I just kept pushing, pushing barriers, pushing barriers, and it was like. It was just great to be like stuck in that like situation where you're like I don't know about anyone else, but I've started to love like the feeling of like your lungs are just gasping for air, and you have to love that that like zone where you're like completely oh, yeah. uncomfortable, like, and it's just like it's the exact same with trading when you're in an uncomfortable position in an uncomfortable trade, and you're looking to get out of it, and sometimes you just kind of have to push through it, like, and I love that this weekend was like the best feeling yesterday was like going at a, up a hill like and it was just like my back was against the wall like my legs wanted to give in my lungs are, yeah, I was just panting for air like but it was deadly like just know like in those moments you owe you're only at 40 percent of your true capacity of what you can mm -hmm. possibly do and to have that voice in your head telling you that you know just just take it easy you know yeah. this is hard 
that victim mentality mindset. Um, not that not that you have it. I'm saying that no. victim mentality voice mm. that's in your head. Uh, it's it's the it's the most toxic thing you could possibly have to fight in your entire. Oh, life. Absolutely, it's crazy though because I don't know. Um, again, it's just for me. But when I have my earphones in, um, it's a lot easier for me to kind of push harder because when I don't have my earphones in and I can hear myself like panting and I can feel, I can like my. I'm struggling to breathe, like, and I can hear it, like, I, I tend to, like, want to take it down a notch because I think I'm I'm pushing myself too far, like, when I'm actually not, like, and I've got so much more to give, you know? You're just thinking of, like, David Goggins, like, these people mm. running 100 miles in Brooklyn. Sicko. Yeah, yeah, he's a monster, but, um, yeah. yeah, dude, the, the feeling that you get when you're done with that, is you know you feel that pride in yourself you're like oh, dude, I, I just you know i didn't want to do that and i did it anyway and, and now oh, no. i feel 10 times better about myself like don't you want to feel like that all the time all the time yeah so in those moments create an anchor for yourself you know what that is yeah. it like creating like when you say an anchor, like, is that like a, a standard or something it's, like that is it? it's when you get into that moment you know, when, when you feel amazing like that, do something like clench your fists or do something that you'll be able to come back to later on in life or maybe next week when you're feeling that same exact way, when you're feeling down, you don't feel like doing things, do whatever you just did, a physical anchor that mm -hmm. puts your mindset right back into that. Because the most successful people in the world, they, they have this quality where they know how to change their state. And that's something that I've always been working on where it's like, I don't feel like doing something, don't care. I could change okay. my state and I could feel amazing at, at any given moment. It's very hard, but, you know, you, you give yourself practice and, and yeah. uh, you do it and you, you're, uh, you'll be better at it. Exactly. It's like gold is starting to react in this area in one minute. The 15 minute just closed bullish. We want to wait for a bearish close on at least the 15 minute. Okay, I'm uploading this for you guys. Uh, I don't know why I didn't upload yesterday but this is the sunday breakdown from uh yesterday i like this setup a lot on gold but this is the five minute i already took a trade this candle right here and this is something that you guys could keep the uh, and I on this candle on the five minute closed with no top wick. This candle rejected, closed with an evening star where it's like a doji on the top. This candle is now shooting right through. I've seen this setup many times, but uh, it's my second trade. I'm, I'm staying disciplined with uh, what I said I was going to do. And that's it. Anyone have anything they're looking at?
No. Really just looking for GG's to break uh, those wicks, those four hour up wicks. Got it. Yes, sir. Go right back to it. Give me one second. Is everyone getting more and more used to uh, Trello? Yeah, I love Trello, man. Awesome. I uh, also with Slack, I just upgraded it. So uh, we have like unlimited space on there. Yeah, I don't know why Slack does that. They want people to subscribe. Yeah, they want to make money. Yeah. Yeah, we were losing some of our features, so I wanted to make sure. this so let's check out what we got fundamentally but barely was speaking it's probably why we got all that ranging Anybody use uh, Forex Live? Yeah. It's a good one, right? Yeah, really good. I, their session wraps are just tops. The best. They're the best, man. Get a nice uh, recap of what's going on. The yeah. Session, what happened in London. <laughs> um, and look, look at gold. This is why we wait for the higher time frames. We get a look at it. We get a look at the lower time frames to see what price is doing, how it's reacting to this resistance. Um, you know, what is it doing in this area of interest that we have? Uh, so keep an eye on that, but you want to wait for that resistance to form on the 15 minute. You want to wait for that 15 minutes, either close bearish or have some bearish structure and pass the, the low of the previous 15 minute. Uh, you could grab a lot of your entries on the 15 minute on gold. Um, most of your entries on GJ, uh, 15 as well, but mostly 30. Um, and they could be impulse entries on the 30 minute as well. But, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to 
Hmm. Drop down to the lower time frames. I'm ready for a big week. Wow, dollar index. It's from the stimulus coming out this weekend. Bank of Japan. Um, so here we got gold over here. GJ is still in this range over here. I want price to break out of this, get a clean move to the left, come right back up to 15600. But let's see. We're we just going to continue bullish, or are we going to consolidate over here for quite some time? And then continue bearish to correct on the higher time frames. How did your uh, buy work out last week? What's up, buddy? How did your buy work out after? Oh, so yeah. An hour ago? Yeah, I, uh, I ended up uh, closing 50 and then just closing the full thing. Um, yeah. Over here, I entered on the 30 minute. This is the 15 minute, but entered on the 30 minute. And what happened was you get this area right here, which was respected. You know, this is a previous support over here. This candle came down, rejected the area. And then this candle didn't have this bottom wick, but the 30 minutes started passing the high of this candle up here, right, to continue back up over here. Now, it ended up coming up into this area, which is where it entered down here. I was like two pips in profit. And then it started flipping bearish and started coming around this area um, on the 15 minute. So yeah, right around this area on the 15 minute, I closed 50. And then I ended up closing the full thing around here, only like seven pips uh, in drawdown. And then it ended up coming all the way down here, form a support over here and then continuing bullish. Managed well. Like I like how you managed it. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's that's the only uh, that's the the most important thing. To be honest with you, I actually think this was it. I have it journaled. Okay, cool. This will give you a better idea. I don't know why I didn't just show you this. So thirty minute, four hour, sixty. Uh, this is when I first came to the chart. This is what price was looking like. And then this candle ended up coming down here and rejecting and closing above this resistance over here, right? So it looked like that. This candle was coming up and past the high of this candle right here. I've seen this setup so many times. Uh, it just typically plays out a lot better during New York instead of pre-New York. Um, and that's why I entered. So price came up and then started. it closed back into the range over here on the 15 minute. This candle started coming down. I closed 50%, and then I closed the full thing, minus 7.1 pips. Now, I haven't taken that after picture yet. Let's do that. I'm waiting on gold right now. There he is. Morning, guys. What's up, buddy? How you guys doing? Bright and early, huh? Yeah. How was your trip? It's good. I'm still up in Washington. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Um, at my buddy's place right now, so he's got some Wi-Fi. That's awesome. Yeah. How long are you up there for? Uh, till tomorrow night. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, um... Did you visit your uh, parents? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So let's say EJ uh, didn't want to close below this area, like I said to wait for, uh, and now it's starting to form support and come back up. All right. Gold. OK. 
trying to keep this below that previous support. We might get this move in uh, in New York. New York volume. So, as I said, we're going to take a look at news, see what's going on. Um, let's see. Take a look at good old Bloomberg. Let me see the uh, let's check this out. Wow. So Goldman Sachs is saying that the unemployment rate will drop to four point one percent by the end of the year. U.S. Wow. is on course for an unem uh, for an employment boom this year once pandemic restrictions ease, the economy reopens. The reopening fiscal stimulus. And what's the percentage right now? It's around nine percent. Oh, okay. So, so. Yeah. All right. That'll be a big drop. Yeah, yeah, four four percent. I mean, that's uh. That's the usual, right? That's uh, that's, that's pretty good. I would say that's uh, kind of standard. Got it. What is it usually sitting at when the economy is at its peak? Um, it probably around there, 4%, 5%. Okay. All right, so we're starting to get this uh, rejection over here. Now, who in here actually trades gold? Who has gold in their trading plan? After we put together your trading plans and, uh, you know, hopped on our second Zoom, who's actually trading gold right now? My last few trades have been gold. Okay. I know Justin is, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I I do. I I, I back test it tons and follow it. I, uh, I I probably trade actually execute live trades more of EJ than gold, okay. but uh, I, I follow it tremendously. That makes sense. Yeah, gold's a good pair to follow. Good commodity. <clears throat> uh, nice inverse of the U.S. economy. Base a lot of of off of it, based on uh, how the U.S. economy is doing. I got a um, so you guys don't have to you guys don't have to um, pay or subscribe to Bloomberg to get these breakdowns for yourself. I highly recommend. Um, not just getting the uh, 4X Live session wraps, but also subscribing to these emails. And they it, it's called Five Things to Start Your Day, and they have one for each session. 
So it just gives you a breakdown of what happens, um, what to be looking for, um, a, a lot of key fundamental um, analysis when it comes to any of your pairs and, and what's going on with your country. So I highly recommend uh, subscribing to that. Like I said, completely free. Someone a little bit earlier asked, what, what percentage is unemployment? Yes. For the... Uh, you know, when, when the economy is humming, but at full employment, it's generally considered 3%, 3%. is the unemployment rate. So um, I'm not sure who asked, but I was just following up on that. Yeah, that was Mana. Mana was uh, curious about that. So Goldman Sachs is saying that we're coming down to 4.2 by the end of the year. If that ends up being true. That would be phenomenal for her. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's like, you know, that's that's a bold statement. Yeah, it's everything's fully back opened and yeah. But I've I've I guess I have a hard time believing that just because yeah, of course, of all the people that have been impacted, you know, I mean, we're at what nine percent or whatever now. Yeah, and think think about like travel and. Um, you know, hotels, hospitality, stuff like that. You know, are we going to be getting international travel back into here by the end of the year? Uh, I know they're planning on getting the vaccines out and every adult vaccinated by the end of May, something around that point. My glasses. But um, if that's the case by the end of the year, that's um, uh, by the end of May, what is that, eight months, nine months? Um, about eight months right there. Until uh, the end of the year, so I don't know. It could happen. Yeah. Well, one of the jobs I used to have in the past is I was a director of finance for a uh, an acrylic company in Thailand, and so I still uh, follow Thailand's economy very closely. And so much of their economy is based on tourism, but it's yeah. closed down for tourism right now. Yeah. And it, you know, it like you said, it's just one of the small small things. I mean, air travel is down so much and. There's been uh, predictions that 50% of business air travel will never return just because businesses had to were forced to do uh, Zoom meetings for all of their meetings. And it turn, turns out many businesses can't operate with not having the expense of flying their people all over the place. Yeah. So you know, a lot of businesses are, are probably going to say, you know what, we can operate just fine without all the added expense. So we're not, we're not going to send our people all over the place. Well, that's not good because, you know, you're never going to get cities like New York, Los Angeles, um, Chicago, any of these cities coming back to what they were. Like, they're, they'll, they'll forever be dead because, you know, we could, we could be done with the virus, right? And if you don't go back to at least 50% capacity or 50% not capacity, but um, – 50% home, 50% back uh, in the office. You know, these cities are never going to come back. All these office buildings all over the place, you know, for what? If you go 100% remote, plus think about the social aspect of people needing that interaction with other people and not being home all the time. Like, it was awesome for a year, you know? People working from home. You don't have to do much, but that starts to get old after a while. Oh, yeah. We're I, starting I to get used it. to it. You got? Oh yeah. Who said that? I did. Rory, you got used to it. People are starting to get used to it. That's the weird part. I know. I don't. I don't like that. Like, like, I, like, I hate this, and now they're kind of like, man, I'm kind of getting used to it. Yeah. yeah I've become a uh, homebody a little bit. Yeah. QJ. So this is the thirty minute. Um, when James, when was this? Uh, one second, check my, my MT4. It was 10.44, quarter to 11. Got it. Yeah, you sent this in Slack, right? No, no, that was my London trade. This was the same, it's the same markups, but it was the same idea. Got it. And this is the trade I actually took. I saw it breaking the, the highs. I had my alert set. And awesome, um, when I saw breaking the highs, I entered, but then I got this, I think it was seven pips. I saw it rejecting. So I closed 50 
at six pips and my stops to break even. Great job, buddy. It's weird though how it just like rejects just there. Like, I don't know why I just rejected it. Yeah, because GJ's is ranging, and th- this yeah. is also only a thir- 13 pip range. So, mm-hmm. technically, we shouldn't really be in this. Yeah. Um, looking at GJ now, see this rejection? It's the four hour over here. Yeah, I just, I think GJ's at um, three year highs right now, and it's finally starting to get that you know, um, exhaustion. I'm not fully bearish on it yet, but, you know, it, it, it tapped uh, 150 again after coming up here two weeks ago. Um, came down, retested the high like it did, and now, you know, it's having some issues trying to come back above 150, 600, which it tapped uh, last week. Now I think uh, I think we might get a correction. Now, this will be interesting on the one hour. If we get a close below this area, this is a fake out. Some nice big wicks right there, huh? Yeah. I wouldn't say nice. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't use the word nice. Because, <laughs> wow. Gold. Right back into this range on the four hour. Four hour close and no bottom wick over here. Could be respecting the support. And you see what I've been doing with gold? Like, all we do is sit back and wait for certain things to happen. If we get that rejection on the 15-minute time frame, like I was saying, we get a 15-minute close, and maybe, like, the, the next 15 minute passes the low of the previous 15 minute, get an impulse entry, that's what we're getting. And we're going to come down and retest that, that low. There's a high probability of that happening. Now, if we close back into this range, now we got to reassess. Now we have to step back and say, okay, what's going on right here? Are we closing back into the range? Where's our next target going to be if we do so? And if we are creating that support on the four hour, like we are right here. Because as we know with, with gold, when it creates this low down here, it just shoots up and cracks the whole move. Creates that low down here, shoots up. Creates that low, shoots up. So now we're respecting that. Well, we might be respecting this area, this new low that it created. Are we forming a support to continue bullish? So what we would want is I see a resistance right over here on the the one hour. Right here. So this being a fake out, you want to close above this area. Again, a close above this area because you got clean moves to the left, clean candles.
Sorry, I had to run off there for a second. But would you ever consider, uh, would you ever do like swing trading step? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm always looking for these um, because I was introduced to scalping. Uh, not introduced, but like the way I, you know, started trading and, and uh, being very comfortable in the markets was um, scalping. I wanted to be in and out of the market within three hours. That's the way my mentor thought. And that's the way, you know, it kind of rubbed off on me. Right. But, um, you know, he also didn't really pay t- too much attention to fundamentals. I think fundamentals are very important. Um, now, I'm, you know, this is my style and what I'm trying to do. And I'm looking for different opportunities where I can turn scalps into intraday trades and then eventually swings. Um, I'm, I'm live back testing the uh, swing trades that I could be taking. I, I journal all the time, different, different trades that I could take on the higher time frames. Uh, but right now, I'm just sticking with uh, scalping and intraday trades and turning some of these scalps in the, into swings. And cool, like master one side and then go on Exactly. The like it, it's, you know, you can look at the macro aspect of, you know, you want to master trading before you move on to, you know, another source of income, maybe real estate, mm-hmm. investing in real estate, uh, because trading is hard enough as it is where you need to pay attention to, to one thing at a time. But, um you know, it's the same thing in trading. That's why you stick to one pair and master that one pair before you move on to another, right? Um, I know GJ pretty well, I, I would say right now. And that's why I feel comfortable uh, trading gold and, and trading uh, EJ because I've been live back testing it for uh, at least a year and a half already. So um, so that's just my thought process. You want to you master one thing before you move on to the next? Instead of just being, you're trying to be a jack of all trades. Yeah, I get you. Like this morning, I took a paper trade on EN just because it looked good, but I wouldn't trade it like with my own money yet because I'm concentrating on the GJ. There you go. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, like there's that saying, uh, a jack of all trades is a master of none, isn't it? What was that? Nope. A jack of all trades is actually a master of none. Exactly. Because they're all over the place. Yeah. They don't know where to go. <laughs> Get the... 15 minute candle almost breaking support on GJ. The yeah. 15 minute candle. Yeah, GJ's, uh, I don't know. It's not so, like I already used one of my trades on GJ. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of learned from last week, the week before, the way GJ's been moving. It's not the way it's, it's usually moves, you know. Uh, when it comes to scalping, like it's, it's been pretty difficult to scalp. Yeah. Uh, which is completely fine. The market will go back to the, what it was and what it normally does do. But um, this could be a good entry. But, you know, with, with the wicks and, and the way the four hours looking right now, yeah. is this a high probability entry taking a sell right here? You know, and that's just what you want to ask yourself. Gold really respecting the Let's all take a look at this email and see what we're looking at economically. 
Did you guys get my fundamentals update? In yeah, Slack? So a couple articles, but when I open them, it just re re redirects me to the Bloomberg website, though. Oh, that oh. one. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. No, yeah, I was just uh, throwing that in there. Awesome. Yeah, just like a little overview of uh, what's going on. Yeah, I like that. Awesome. I'm just constantly trying to figure out different different things that we could be doing, how to make this thing better, um, how to keep you guys driven, right? That's the main thing, keeping your brain healthy, constantly like feeding it with positivity, feeding it with, um, you know, uh, motivational stuff going on in your head because – once you start to phase out of that, it gets very easy to just go down a, a bad hill. And I'm not saying that hill is very bad. It's just like you feel a little bit less confident than you did before. And it's very easy to switch right back into it. Maybe listen to an audio book that uh, drives you like a business book, a self-help book. Uh, watch one of those YouTube videos on, on, on YouTube, the uh, motivational videos. Uh, getting a workout in, putting in work. You constantly, like your brain is so easy to be manipulated by that voice in your head, like me and uh, Nathan were talking about. But, um, you know, if you just keep the train going, you keep the, the chain rolling when it comes to uh, the way your brain works and always thinking positively how you can be better than the day before, it's very hard. That's why not, you know, there's only 1% of people that are su super successful. It's because they could do that. That's what I want for you guys. Always thinking like the 1%. How can I always be getting better than the day before? That's what you want. Trust me, it gets, it gets easier. Right now, it, it might be a little tough. Um, there's a lot of things going on. You're, you're in the beginning of your journey right now. You're, you're, getting, you're taking a lot of losses um, more than you normally would or, or more than you will be down the road. Uh, but you constantly got to stay positive, constantly have to stay up on yourself and uh, – Keep feeding your brain with new information and, and uh, staying positive. Hold on one second, guys. I'll, uh, I'm going to leave part of this article up for you. Just want to read through it real quick and then I'll uh, be right back. In 1.9 trillion injected again. Damn. In the system. It's crazy, right? It's crazy, man. We're gonna we're probably gonna see crazy inflation. Yeah, I would think Unless so. They, they're able to control it properly, but damn. <laughs> you never printed that much. Curious to see how they're gonna handle that. Someone told me that 1.9 trillion could equal a million dollars for every American. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, not wow. bad. it's mad. But what do we get? 1400 So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess that pay that barely pays mortgage for most of the U.S. residents, right? Yeah, dude. Uh, I mean, thing. depending on where you live. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. 1400 it's crazy yeah i, I heard uh, I, I read something about um the u.s dollar that were created in 2020 was about it, com it uh, composed about 20 percent of our of the money that's in the you know circulating right now wait say that again so about 20% of the U.S. dollar that's uh, out right now was printed uh, in 2020. Wow. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. Yeah, there's, there's no way that can't have an impact, right? There's got to be a big effect for that. Yeah, we'll have to pay the freaking price. And we're going to pay. Yeah. The worst part. Yeah. Keep trading. 
Yeah. I think the past year has been like the greatest year to be like in the trenches and trading. You could, we saw everything happen. Yeah. The thing about the economy that you read in books, they've been doing it. Extreme measures. Monopoly money. <laughs> yeah, literally. I mean, almost even monopoly is more legit. You can't print more money when you're out, out of money. You just Dude, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, it says here that there's about like total of 14 trillion dollars, US dollars. And imagine right now the 1.9 being printed like one time. Insane. Man. Don't really know what to think about it. You guys talking about stimulus? Yeah. Crazy. They haven't even spent what they 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 passed last time. The Jordan they, just said 20% of the circulating money right now, the US dollar, was printed in 2020. Yep. Last year. Crazy that the year is already over. Yeah, man. We're about to see some hyperinflation. Yeah. Can you guys hear me any clearer when, like right now? Yeah. How about now? Like way more clear or it's the same exact thing? Well, the same. Pretty me. much the same. Okay, cool. So I'm going to be keeping my mic over here for now on because it always is right in front of my keyboard. It's just kind of annoying. But I want to make sure you guys hear me clearly. So how is like, like Geo, how, how do you feel about your trading journey, like where it's at right now? How do you think it could be improved? Um, I'm actually comfortable with the way I'm taking trades. Like I'm getting more comfortable of taking less trades, actually. Nice. Because, um, well, I, I switched from doing swing trade to scalping, right? So yes. swing trade, do you actually get less trades? Mm -hmm. And so when I jumped into scalping, I was, you know, I was excited and looking like, a lot of like setups but then uh i just realized i need to you know stick to 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 whatever trading plan i have because you know when i get excited whenever i see something that you know compared to swing trading yes but um yeah i i gotta just keep reminding myself that you know um not every day is a trading day exactly That's a key right there. Now, it's very easy to jump into the market and just take one of those impulsive entries. Not impulse entry, but an impulsive, you know, trade where you just see a setup and you're like, oh, my God, I want to be in that. Yeah, just, just, just to be in the trade. <laughs> exactly. And that's dangerous on a Monday or a Friday or Sunday when the market opens, you know. But, uh, Gio, did you finish the course yet? Yes, I did. Oh, oh, let's uh, let's hop on the second Zoom. Yeah, uh, probably uh, gonna schedule uh, maybe this weekend. Okay. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go set up a, a Zoom appointment. Yeah, yeah. I would love to. I'd love to. Rory, how about yourself? Um, like, how do you feel right now? And you know, I know you're kind of in the you're in the same realm as uh before before you know you guys are on the same path right now which is kind of cool uh if you guys want to hook up at some point and uh talk trading and see where you guys are at but he's up in as far as like time what's up before is like new to trading you're saying yeah yeah as, as far as like picking everything up he's still trying to draw support and resistance how, how are you withdrawing support and resistance right now it's coming along nice man just being here consistently yeah looking at the charts, watching you break it down. Um, it seems like we've seen some tough weeks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been watching kind of everybody struggle with some trades. Yeah. I have not taken a lot of trades that you guys have taken. I've just watched. Smart. Um, That's what I told you from the beginning, right? If it yeah. If you don't take it. 
yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm looking forward to making some some good trades. Oh yeah, everything's been pretty small, you know. The losses have been small. The wins have been small. Um, I'm about fifty fifty right now on on wins and losses. Got it, that, and that's fine. That's a scalper. Yeah. Like right yeah. now in, in your um, you know, your stage of of your trading career right now, that you know, that's that's okay, and. Uh, yeah. And like I said before, you just got to embrace the process, embrace losing right now, because um, it's all part of what you have to do. Like it's yeah. part of the process of any kind. Of, like you're, you're, uh, you're in real estate. You know, getting a rejection that's part of it because you're learning how to fight that rejection down the road, right? Yeah. You know, so somebody tells you no. Okay, let's figure out how, you know, I can combat that. Not combat that, but you know keep the, the flow of the conversation going when you're knocking on doors. Yeah. We used to role play all the time. That's how we know each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. But, um, yeah, it's the same thing in trading. You're going to take losses. You're going to figure out what you got to do better. This is the very beginning of the year. You know, we're in the first quarter of the year. So we're, you know, coming out of the most hectic year we've ever had uh, in our, you know, our lifetime. Um and it directly affects the markets. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been obviously trading pre-COVID, so I don't really know what that market was like, but it seems to be it's been pretty challenging lately. Uh, yeah, you could say it's challenging. It's, um, it's just been uh, kind of crazy. No, Mana said something. And it's a graph on the, the money printing. Yeah. Look how it bumped in 2020. Disgusting. Jeez. And it's, you know, it's got to happen. Um, but the amount is the question. You know, what needs to be printed right now? You know, do you need $1.9 trillion? Where is that money going to? What are some of the um, – what's what's being put in that bill? You know, it doesn't have anything to do with COVID whatsoever. These are some of the things you got to ask yourself. Like, this is our money, you know, and, and I'm not the entitled dude. Like, I, I hate that when people feel entitled. Like, you know, Joe Biden owes me money. You know, like, that's kind of annoying. But um, it is our money. Like the government, you know, they answer to us. They, you know, we vote and they get get into office because of our decisions as a collective whole to put them in. Obviously, we have the electoral, electoral college, which we need because, you know, uh, if it wasn't for that, then, you know, every major city would just be determining the president and the uh, senators and stuff. So you need that. But again, that, that's a whole other conversation. You need to really look into these bills to see what's in there because, you know, are we sending money to other countries? Um, is it going to things that should not even be – is it bailing out states that shouldn't be bailed out because they, they don't know how to balance a budget? There's many different questions that you can go into, but it doesn't change the fact – like, that. that's our money. And um, they're taking forever to pass bills to give us money back. Yeah, that's weird. Patrick Bed David. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, I like him. I like him a lot. I, I've read his books. Um, I, I like his podcast a lot. Very informative. Um, I, I like the way Gold is sitting up back here. Um, but very informative. But he brought up a great point when it comes to minimum wage. Now, instead of increasing minimum wage to 15%, which would destroy a lot of, or not 15%, but $15 an hour, that would destroy a lot of jobs. Not as many people would be able to, to be hired. Business owners wouldn't be able to afford that. Uh, only big corporations would be able to afford that, right? Costco, uh, Walmart, all these major corporations, Amazon, you know, they can pay that, but the small business owner, they can't do that. So uh, we're getting some volume in gold right now. This is what I was waiting for. So I just want to see what's going on with it. Just for one minute. Well, 
the ADM volume. Yes. Not a little bit. I've seen this happen so many times on gold. All right. I'm going to enter gold. This is my second trade of the day. Little sell? Little sell. So this is kind of what I've been waiting for. Conservative stop loss. Could be coming down to retest this area down here. 8 a.m. New York volume. Let's see what we got. Please send something. I saw that. Good idea. You talking about uh, gold jams? Did you all take a trade in gold? Yeah, just uh, took this on gold. <coughs> okay, I'm going to journal this. What, it, what was it off? Oh, uh, re retesting that previous. Oh, okay, I see. That's nice. Yeah, so this is on the 30 minute. Nice. Um, let's see here. So as the 30 minute came down, yeah, we tested the bearish trend over here, passed the low of this bullish candle right here, and then retraced a little bit. That's why. I okay. Entered. Okay. I like that. That's nice. I'm going to enter another one, but I was just uh, another idea about minimum wage. We're talking. Oh, yeah. I don't even think I got to it, James. <laughs> um, so um, instead of raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, um, reduce taxes for anybody making less than $50,000 a year to $0. Those people should not have to pay taxes to the government. No federal or state taxes. If you're making anything less than that. Maybe you have some provisions in there with when it comes to uh, you know the the parameters around it, maybe mm -hmm. zero taxes but significantly decreased um 
you know, if you know, if you want these people to have a uh, uh, earning living, then why do you need their money? Yeah, you know, it's a very valid point. Like, and that's not even my point. I just really agree with it. Like that. that was is- that Sharma's point? Was it? What's that? Was it Sharma's point that made yeah, it that? Uh, I brought it up yesterday. It was uh, Patrick Bit David. Um, yeah. He's a, he's a uh, big entrepreneur. He's one of the biggest uh, in the world. Mm-hmm. Get off me. I have a question for you. Oh, good for What's up, buddy? What's up, man? Um, so did you guys hear partial and um, like prices going down like that? I'm sorry, what was that? So do you guys like secure partial like uh partial profits like along the way, like trailing stock with with gold? Yeah. Yeah. So what you could do with uh, gold right here, the way it's pushing down, is you could bring your stop loss right above that candle right here. Uh huh. Um, I'm not going to secure it until I get to probably about this wick right here. Okay. But I can move my stop loss here. And um, so the stop loss was above the previous candle before, right? And now you. It was above these wicks. Okay. On the 15 minute. All right, sounds good. Yeah. There we go. The trade. For my stop loss to break even at gold because gold is a motherfucker. Yeah, I put a story up and I tried tagging all of you guys and I think some people just didn't get tagged for some reason. I put all of you guys in there and you just never got the notification, I guess. Whatever. Did you already close the trade now? No, I, I have my stop loss a little bit past break even, and I, I might get stopped out, but that's okay. Okay. So you didn't take, uh, like, you didn't <laughs> drop it when it filled the bottom, when it filled in that, uh, like, wick fill? Right here? Yeah. Yeah, I ended up securing, actually, it made, like, a strong push, so I secured around here. Secured oh, okay. Around, like, 26 pips. All right. Yeah. Um. And did you did you get the breakdown of like why I took this? Um, it's it's because it's that clean candle to the mirror, like the mirror, right on the left. Um. Well, yeah. Here, I'll show you in one second. Let me just. Uh... <clears throat> I believe it was twenty seven. Too sure. Yeah, I probably just got stopped out. And that's why you secure. 
You'll never go broke with Satanic Prophets. That's a uh, little Rakil quote. So you should put in 10 fibs. Wow. Look at that. Coming right back into the range. Did anybody else catch that? Justin? No, I was uh I, I was doing the one my one hour strategy. Oh god. I got I got I got I got, I got stopped out at, at at twenty pips, but I'm I'm still watching it. Okay. You got stopped out twenty pips and draw that you're saying? Yeah. It's 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 a hybrid between a swing and a scalp, so it's it doesn't have the same risk parameters in terms of absolute pips, but uh, the percentage is still the same. Got it. Got it. Yeah, Dave, I didn't even realize that uh, David was in here. What's up, buddy? <laughs> He's pissed. He missed that one. Okay, so what is this? This is uh, James Murray. Um, I, I love this simple. I love these simple breakdowns, guys. Just one, two sentences in the bubble. Put all your description in the Trello description part, right in here. Put like, like if you want some in detail, uh, in depth detail about your trade, put it in here. When it comes to the charts, this is for your own sake too, not just like me looking it over, but uh, just so that you, you know, you don't always have to go back and read over this description part. You can go back. And look at the bubbles and just be like, okay, I was doing this, I was doing this, 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 this. I know exactly where I was when I took this trade months ago. You know, I can do that with my previous trades just because I keep these simple and I get to them quicker. Um, but that's uh, besides the point. So bullish trend, form support, paper trade, 16 pip secured. Uh, oh, this is the Euro NZD trade that you were talking about. Yeah, I just took it because I like to set up during London. Where was I the wouldn't entry? normally take it. James, where was the entry on this? Um, the entry was the third candle over. You see the last one support as it came up? I, I took it then. Okay. Now, what was your confirmation uh, for taking this? I saw it form support and then I saw the can coming come up. I just said I take it as a paper trade just to test it. Got it. So you, would you see like on the five minute this starting to turn around? Yeah, I was looking at the five and the 15 and I just liked how the bullish yeah. kind of pressure was forming. But I normally wouldn't trade it and it was just uh, just to see, test the waters kind of thing. Yeah, 100%. That's a, that's a good job. Uh, just paper trading it. Um, did, do you do this or is this like an indicator? Uh, it's a pivot. just a higher highs and higher lows. Oh, okay. Just so it's handy just to be make aware of them, really. Yeah, that's smart. Wow. See, this is a perfect example of why you secure on gold. Crazy. <laughs> you know, with, with GJ, sometimes you don't have to move your stop loss right to break even right away. You can move it above the, the entry candle or something along those lines. But when it comes to gold, you want to secure as soon as you can. That's something that I've been working on with my one hour strategy. Okay. Is um like what oh, when man. when to secure what percentage. Sure. And um you, I said so lock with, your back. with the sorry, with the back testing. Um with with the back testing, I'm trying to see should I secure after fifteen or should I secure after fifteen pips and then if it runs, um, do I secure after thirty five pips, thirty pips, and then you know like what gives the best probability for a profit? Because like you said, gold wicks so much and will move so much. You know, what, at what point do you move your, your stop loss? So you're, you're kind of protected. Yeah. 
hundred percent. They, um, that's, that's another thing that, you know, you, you really just have to test the waters and, and figure it out yourself when you're back testing. Um, for me personally, the way I manage risk is I always secure either 80 or 90% at 10 pips on GJ or maybe sometimes 12 to 15 pips on GJ, depending on where the next zone is. And uh, maybe there's like a, a little hesitation area that it could be reaching. Um, I want to secure at that point. And then, you know, after that, where am I securing after that? I'm securing um, anywhere from 20 to 30 pips. And normally, you know, backtesting GJ, um, some of these moves that I get, you know, you can wait thir uh, for 30 pips to um, uh, secure your next thing. And then, and then that's it. I just leave my stop loss at break even and I just let it run. Sometimes it just keeps going. Sometimes I get stopped at a break even. Uh, sometimes I could try that stop onto the, you know, if it's a sell uh, above the resistance of the, the next four hour, you know, or the next resistance of the one hour that it forms later on in the day. So with with gold, that, that could be anywhere from 25 to 30 pips for your first secure, right? Just like I did right over here. Hey, Mon. Yep. Yo, so I just read your uh, your Instagram message. Let's cut that goal in half. Wait. Uh, in half? Okay, yeah, yeah, in six months. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to, you know, bring up a private message on the uh, stream, but all I'm saying is let's cut that in half um, and aim for that. And I think that's very, very possible for you. All right, good. You know, that's not unrealistic at all. And you want to push for goals that are a little unrealistic, you know? Yep. Um, most people are just pushing for realistic goals. They're like, you know what? I think I could do that. And, and, you know, but like they look at unrealistic goals as unattainable. But if you, if you push for those goals and you fall short, you're much more ahead than if you were to, to push for like a mediocre goal. Yeah. You know? So always cut that time in half, always cut that amount in half, always, you know, and, and push for that. Yeah, just like the the thing that Elon Musk says or something, like make a 10-year plan and try to achieve it in six months or some exactly. shit. I like I like that one. Yeah. All right, I get, got it. Um do you think if GJ close above uh above that resistance on the 30 minutes, do you think it's gonna be good for a buy? Yeah. I actually think, wow, this is the entry um, that I was taking before. Yeah. Oh, my God. Over here. And now that, that's a good lesson for everyone. So I took this entry over here. You see these candles? These three yep. candles? It's very similar to this. doesn't look exactly the same, but I would have entered right here with a stop loss down here, passing the high of this candle right here, anticipating price to push through with volume. Now, with, with what I did, I did that during pre-New York. This is during New York. So there's a much higher chance for this to play out compared to taking this in uh, pre-New York. Yeah, I'm in there, but really, really low risk. James. What's up? I'm in, I'm in there, in the GG trade, but very, very low risk. Okay. Might be scaling in if there's a support or something. Yeah. I want to take a picture of this. Always want to take as many screenshots as possible. 
and always put the time there, put the uh, time frame there. Obviously, you can see it on the chart if you put the, you know, you don't really have to put the time frame, but it just makes it easier for you. Euro is just ranging. So gold looks like it grabbed liquidity. We grabbed that liquidity wick over here and it flipped bullish. I, I, I did a, a second entry on that uh, my one hour strategy for buys. Okay. And I, uh, I secured I secured fifteen with stops at a break even now and then um, shoot. And now I just oh no not not yet not yet. But I, I was I'm gonna secure thirty five at sixteen ninety six. Okay. So it's uh, so it, <laughs> I'm guessing he entered right over here. It's price past the one hour. Yep. Yeah. That, that, exactly. Good entry, man. I like it. This candle closed back into the range over here. This candle grabbed liquidity and came right back in and passed the high of that candle. It's a great entry. Safer, safer buys would be if price uh, closes above this area, we get a uh, retest, and this could be the move uh, coming up for New York. That that nine o'clock, nine fifteen, nine thirty move when the uh, stock market opens. Oh man! Wow. For eighth. Damn, I don't think I filled in these bubbles. My uh, weeks of my life. For DJ, do you think it was better to get uh, on the 15 minutes for an entry? Let's analyze. Wait, what the hell? Oh, there we go. Because, um, like, the only reason why I didn't get in on the 15 minutes because we had, like, on to the left, like, rejections, like, one, like, yeah. three rejections. So this can of closed uh, still back into the range below these areas over here. Safe yeah. entry uh, will be if this can of closes above. So, okay, so basically on the 30 minutes, right? Uh no, you, you can get that close on the uh, 15 minute. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to end up being the 30 minute. Yeah. Um, maybe get a little retest uh, for price to continue bullish. All right. Just making sure. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. That's nah, pushing up. Thank you. 
Sheesh. This was the trade. Who was in this? I entered a small position. Oh, that's right. Good shit, man. Thanks. Yeah, 830 volume. I would secure at um, obviously 10 pips, but also uh, right before 830 because you're going to get that 830 uh, bottom wick coming coming down. True. And, and it, or get, you know, knowing GJ could also fake out. But that's a great trade. So for this GJ trade, wouldn't you wait um, <coughs> after it closes above the resistance for a stronger confirmation? Yes. Yeah, so knowing GJ, though, when, when, it, when it has volume, and I'm going to point it out on the higher time frames, too. Just uh, let me uh, just write this. Impulse entry is pushed past. 30 minutes. Yeah, it's So the 30 minute close with no top wick, uh, Mana. Yeah, that means close, right? Uh, close full or just secure? Yeah. So I would secure because, you know, it's got, it's leaving that area. Yeah, and we're, yeah. And we're getting into that rejection zone yeah. to the left. But like you're leaving that, that uh, consolidation to the left. So we could continue up from here. This oh, could be an entry, but we'll see. I had the previous 30 minutes. Yeah. All right, everyone, I'm going to take off. Everyone have a great rest of your day. You as well, Justin. Have a good one, all right? Thanks a lot. Talk to you guys. Thanks. You too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did anybody watch the um, video I posted in the uh, the course of me just going through my journal? I, I'm i planning on watching it okay. for next week. Uh, next week's review. Yeah, I feel like... Um, that would be helpful for you guys. I was just I was just going through my journal, throwing some music on, and uh, doing what I normally do, and just doing a later analysis on it. Uh, but then I figured, you know, I might as well just record this. And I wanted to get through it, you know, get the uh, quantity in. Um, so I, I didn't want to like talk through every single trade. It's just literally me going through my journal, me writing down things I would have done differently. And it's you could definitely learn from it. I don't speak until the end of it. Oh, that's right. I wanted to break this down for before. Before, are you still with me? Mm hmm. Before? You're muted if you didn't uh, know.
One hour looks really nice too. One hour? Yeah. So maybe we need to stay away from GJ for a little bit during pre-New York. Because it's been wacky during pre-New York. What do you think about trading the one hour on GJ? Oh, it's great. You know, the higher the time for me, the higher the time frame, the better. You just gotta wait a little bit longer. They're all, they're all the same, you know. Four hour. <laughs> I mean, that's three. That's three candles during the session. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, it was, that was a nice setup. See now gold is coming right back into the range. We gotta use the bathroom. Hope uh, Justin secured. But um, guys, I'm about to uh, head off right now. I'm actually headed to the city. Uh, I hope a couple of you guys got some some nice trades. Mana got got in a nice one. Uh, Geo, did do you grab anything? Nah, I didn't enter. Okay, all right. Well, uh, you know it's only Monday, so we have got plenty of time this week. Uh, please schedule that Zoom so we could just go over you know your trading plan and. Uh, uh, some of your past trades and really dig deep into your trading and then uh, set you on the right path, all right? Yeah, for sure, man. All right, guys, you guys have a good day. If you guys need me at all, obviously reach out on Slack. Um, be glad to help you out if you have any questions and uh, looking forward to, to uh, tomorrow. Sir. Sure. Right. 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 Remember what I said, better than yesterday, all right? Yes, sir, always. We said, we said at the beginning of this month that this is going to be the best month of your life, so stick to it. All right. Yes, sir. It's going to set you up for the rest of the year. So, um, guys, have a great day. Put your head down. Get that back testing in. Uh, th this is your goal. So, um, you know, do anything you can to accomplish it. And uh, again, if you need me, just let me know. All right. Sure. See you guys.